guests with three of the most popular game show hosts in the history of television. Let's take a look at this tape. Peter Marshall, master of the Hollywood Squares, and audiences loved him for 14 years and 5,000 shows. Gene Rabin was known throughout the 1950s as Steve Allen's sidekick on The Tonight Show and The Steve Allen Show, of course. And in 1962, he found game show fame on The Match Game, remember that? Which lasted 16 years. Art Fleming was a radio announcer, a TV news anchor, and a Hollywood actor. But most people remember him as the original quiz master of Jeopardy way back in 1962. Will you please welcome Peter Marshall? Thank you. KMOX Radio. You know it. St. So Louis. St. Louis. Yes. Get all our plugs because we all know the business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for $100. You got it. Right. <laughs> Did she try to pick you up backstage? <laughs> Isn't she? Lo she's lovely. Oh, sure. Yeah, she really is. <laughs> she is. Yeah, just a sweet, innocent girl. She's gorgeous. <laughs> My friend Ivana's marriage is in shambles. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you go, she's lovely. Did you cut her up? We didn't hear it. Did you cut her up? I we were trying to. Her up. I just tried to find out what she got out of Donald Trump's. What did she get? What did she say? Not a lot of publicity, that's for sure. Yeah, what'd, she, what'd she get? She got a career. Yeah. She got big bucks, and she's now somebody. God, I'd love to meet him. Yeah. I, I, I need him. I need that man. How much commission are you going to get on this? Uh, it's so good to see you. It's good to see you. And I miss you. I miss all three of you. you Hollywood Squares. For how many years do we do it together? Well, actually, you said 14. It was almost 17 years. Daytime you, and eight years nighttime. And you did almost all of them. Yeah. yeah it was right. wonderful. Yeah. How it was a you, lot of fun. Yeah, it really was. The first thing I was ever on was Match Game. The That's first show right. I ever yeah. did was Match Game. And there you were yeah. with Van Johnson and uh, who was the other one? Joan Fontaine. That was at NBC in the 60s, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, in the 60s. How long was that on? Uh... Uh, nine, 16 years. 16 years also. Yeah. And 12 Jeffrey... and a half years, 2,858 shows. And I was... He misses it. You know, that was the most solid hour NBC ever had daytime. Yeah. That's right. Jeopardy Squares. Yeah. Jeopardy Squares. Yeah. And then Lynn Bolin came in and broke that up. That's it, yes. That was a good move. First vice president of <laughs> that daytime oh, yeah. television. And then NBC everything. started to go right down the tube. Uh -huh. I saw... Yeah. The I tell you what, the worse than that, when Match Game was on CBS, there was a... I can't think of his name now. Fortunately, I've repressed it. <laughs> we have the highest rating in the history of daytime television. No one's ever broken our record. And he was so excited about this. He was the vice president in charge of daytime at CBS. He said, boy, it's so terrific at 4 o'clock. Let's move it to 1 o'clock and beef up that time slot. Sure. And he did. Oh, yeah. Six months later, he says, let's move it to 10 o'clock in the morning. And he did. And six months later, the ratings went down the tubes, and well, he canceled right the show. Out of the network, yeah. But that's the frustration of it that's, all. Yeah. Well, Fred Wonderful Silverman business. turned down squares at CBS. They he turned down originally. Yeah, and then when he became head of NBC, <laughs> he moved our time, trying to kill us. And he would move us to a different time, and the ratings would come right back and move us. And finally, he said, the heck with it, and took us off and made a wonderful move. He put David Letterman on daytime for an hour and a half. I remember that. Got a nine yeah. rating. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. David Letterman's wonderful where he is, late night, but not on daytime. How did you all, did you think when you started out that these were going to be such long things? Because, I mean, when, when you started no, with no, game no, shows, game shows weren't... See, that's why I'm now. thrilled to be on this panel. When I was a youngster, I used to admire these guys. They that's were right. my yeah. idols. <laughs> and I learned a lot about the business. Uh, and the only reason I was on the Broadway stage when I was four years old, and the only reason I ever did a game show is because I'd never done a game show. And I figured it'd last three months, possibly four. Fade out, fade in, hey, 12 and a half I'm years. I'm not really a game show host. I'm an actor who yes. has to do who have that's done... Right. I did Same a thing. Show. Yeah, I was an actor. You know, I've done two shows on Broadway. Right. You've done a lot more. But uh, that my original ambition was to, to work in the theater. Well, I was an actress, and I, I did a movie again last night. Wonderful, yeah. all, by the way. But, but we all do, no, we have, I'm not going to give you that, but I'm saying, we all, everyone starts out as an actor, an actress in this right. business. 
I mean, you know, how did you what fall? Do you want to, uh, your kids, I want to be a game show host. Very few people want to oh, be yeah. a game no, show host. No, no, no. <laughs> but you know, an interesting part in reverse, after you are a game show MC, uh, years later you want to get back into acting. They said, well, there's a whole new crop of producers and yeah. directors. And they said, well, gee, have you ever acted before? You know. I want to find out what it's like when they put the shows back on the air and you're not in them. Because I went back to do. Hollywood Squares, and I love John Davidson. So do I. I still missed you every show. Well, thank and you. I want to talk about why you're not on uh -huh. and the changes in the new shows, because Jeopardy, I never dared to go near Jeopardy, it was so hard. Now it's not so hard. No, we'll it's talk very easy. We'll talk about that. I want to hear that. why it's very okay. easy. We'll talk after commercial. Great. I'm not a fool, that'll carry them through. We'll talk <laughs> after commercial. Don't go anywhere. Peter Marshall, Gene Rayburn, and Art Fleming, and you were telling us what's happened to Jeopardy. It used to be much harder. Oh, very much so. Uh, I don't know. They decided to make it easier. But about a Why? year ago, I was talking to the uh, syndicator out there, and he said, Hey, Art, you're killing us in the press. You're saying the show's very easy. And I said, It's not easy. It's a joke. He said, What do you mean? I said, You had a question on the other day. The oldest city in Canada that starts with a Q. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. His response to me, he says, that's tough. And I said, why? He says, because Americans know very little about the Canadians. I said, oh, how many cities in the world do you know that start with a Q? And he looked at me like I was crazy and walked off. That's, that's, it's you know, too easy. It is. And they had another one the other day. Uh, the color that Mark Twain's suit made famous. You know, white suit. What are you going to say, fuchsia? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's ridiculous. Well, but it is a lot easier pink now. in the closet. Yeah. But what <laughs> <That's> when it came out? Only kidding. Now that yeah, yeah. she said Mark Twain. Only kidding, that. Mark. <laughs> All the mail goes directly to Joan Rivers right here in New York. Now, why aren't you two, why aren't you back with Match Game? Well, mainly because uh, when Mark Goodson pitched up the show to ABC, uh, he pitched me with it, and ABC said, we want a young man. Oh. That's right. Well, they're dead right. Yeah. <laughs> Does it get you furious? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Because uh, it's a, a very weak format, and it takes uh, a special skill to do it, which I happen to have. Yeah. And uh, uh, when you someone... pray a lot. Yes. No, you know, one, of the heads of N one of the heads of NBC, before he was one of the heads of NBC, this is recently, he's not there anymore, uh, his background, he wrote, he wrote questions for Match Game. I swear to God, that was, he wrote, my blank was so big that it bulged. I mean, right. I, the, you know. Maybe uh, those kind of questions. I mean, yeah. I said he was, he, he became vice president of NBC because he wrote questions for Match Game. <laughs> now, why weren't you back? The same question to you. What happened with Hollywood Squares? I, I got the rights to Squares uh, through uh, Orion when I was doing Fantasy, and I went to NBC. Uh, first of all, I went to Orion. I said, I went to Merrill. I said, Merrill Heater, who, who created it. I said, let's buy uh, Squares from Orion. He said, I'm really not interested, Pete. So I said, do you mind if I do? And I went to Orion. I met with them, and they said, okay, if you could sell it. Uh, next day, I sold it to Grant Tinker at NBC. And then they brought in these new guys, and they were upset that I had gone to Grant Tinker. Uh -huh. And uh, so they said, we don't need him. I said, what you should do, and this is a true story. Mm -hmm. I said, you guys should put, I said to Grant, you should buy Jeopardy and Squares, put it on uh, 1030, 1130, yeah. 1230, Do it again. And, and get Arthur, and we'll do that block again. It was the best hour in, in daytime TV. And they said, uh, that's a good idea. So they got an hour. They got Gene Rayburn, Match Game, and squares, put them together, convoluted the whole thing, put them opposite General Hospital, and got John Bauman from oh, Sean on. That now. was the dumbest thing they ever did. Because <laughs> he had never done anything like that. I mean, he was good in Sean on but it was it, terrible. Uh, they it wanted takes, me to produce yeah. it. What, what I wanted to do was put it back on TV so you have to build a family. Paul was, had, uh, was gone, they were all gone. So I wanted to create a whole new family and put it into syndication. Talk about some of the funny times. What was the funniest thing that ever happened? When oh, wait, Fred Silverman, I think, canceled us. No, uh, no, no, but you know this. <laughs> Uh, the, fu the funniest, I don't know, Joan, you were there Some all the, the time. The funniest things I, happened Paul off Lynn getting drunk. Get, well, we would go and have, we would do three shows, and Joan, of course, was a regular on the show. And then we'd go and have our, they used to cater the beautiful dinner. Uh, people, all, everybody would come to dinner. A lot of wine. A lot of wine. Oh, yes. And Paul would get bombed and mean, and when he got mean, I started to scream. He, now, he was funny. But he was funny. He so was Lennon funny. So, says he would answer a question, Paul would turn to me and go, 
Yeah. <laughs> and then he'd sing. <laughs> but he loved the Lennon sisters. He loved them, but he was funny with them. Uh, yeah, he was funny. What, what happened to, to Match Game? What was the funniest well, thing to remember? The funniest incident I think we ever had was when I was doing an interview with a new young contestant, a very attractive young woman with a beautiful smile, and she had beautiful dimples. And I wanted to compliment her on her dimples, and I looked at her and I said, you have the most beautiful nipples I've ever seen. <laughs> more embarrassing moments we had a uh, category fairy tales and the answer was if you don't believe in fairies you don't believe in him and we were looking for Santa Claus the woman hit the button and she said who's Liberace oh. so of course they had to bloop that and I am bent over doubled over and hysterical uh, the audience is out of it and then people started calling they said what's the matter with art you know? <laughs> But, oh. There are a lot of things that you can get away with today that in we our day, you couldn't say You couldn't say those things. I, I guessed it on uh, Hollywood Squares once, and uh, they asked uh, Paul Lynn, they said, why do motorcyclists wear black leather jackets? And he looked, and he says, because chiffon wrinkles. <laughs> and that was the end of it for me. <laughs> I want to thank all three of you. Such a pleasure, you, Thank you so much. Oh, I love you. Uh, You're a dog. Turn a man who talks to the dead.